Let's get the Republican response now from one of the lead negotiators on the GOP side of the infrastructure deal, Senator Rob Portman of Ohio. So, Senator Portman, we saw the president announce a deal. Then we saw the president say there's no deal unless you also, uh, the Senate also passes this much bigger uh, Bernie Sanders plan. And now we have this pretty incredible walk back uh, from uh, President Biden. So what is the bottom line right now? Where are we in all of this? Well, first, I was very glad to see the president clarify his remarks because it was inconsistent with everything that we had been told all along the way. We were all blindsided by the comments the previous uh, day, which were that somehow these two bills were connected. The reconciliation bill, which is a trillion dollars of social spending that's going to be entirely partisan, largest tax increase in American history on the one hand. And the other hand, the infrastructure bill, which is bipartisan, has no taxes, focuses on core infrastructure, and has been bipartisan from the start. So it was a, it was a surprise, uh, to say the least, that those two got linked. And I'm glad they've now been delinked. And it's very clear that we can move forward with a bipartisan bill that's broadly popular, not just among members of Congress, but the American people. Over 87 percent of people who were told by one poll believe we ought to do a bipartisan infrastructure bill because it's needed. Our roads and bridges are in tough shape. Our ports, our rail system, our grid, our broadband system needs to be expanded. So these are all things that, that people are looking for. So we were glad to see them disconnected. And now we can move forward on something that really makes sense for the American people. So what's your sense? You've spent a, a fair amount of time directly talking to the president, to your former Senate colleague, President Biden. Is he negotiating in good faith on this? Uh, you saw uh, the, the Wall Street Journal editorial board say this was a bait and switch. Mitch McConnell say it was head spinning. We've had the clarification. But can you, as you sit down face to face with, with President Biden, are, uh, can you trust what, what he's negotiating with you? Well, I think there's been good faith on both sides. And, and you know, it's it's true that there was a miscommunication there in terms of linking the two, but that was never uh, part of our discussion and, and never part of the bipartisan group discussion that's been going on for almost four months now, and certainly not when the president and his team engaged to negotiate the, the final aspects of this. So the bottom line is it's, it's a popular bill for all the right reasons. It's the right thing for the country. You know, every analysis of our infrastructure system gives us low grades. You know, we do have crumbling roads and bridges. We also are not competitive with the rest of the world. And this is the kind of spending, Jonathan, that is long term, that makes our economy more efficient, therefore more productive. Uh, this is the kind of thing that's going to create a lot of great jobs and with good benefits. So it's something that we need to do to be able to compete with China and our other global competitors and, and to frankly do something that presidents you know, through the ages have talked about it. I remember when Donald Trump talked about it, the need for a $2 trillion infrastructure bill, but so did President Obama before him and so did President Bush before him. So we're finally getting something done here that's been talked about in Washington for decades. Well, I'll tell you, it was, it was a sight to see uh, Democrats and Republicans uh, together at the White House, smiles, a few backslaps. Uh, w w this is like about the the least controversial thing uh, that you could be working on with uh, with the other party. What does it say if you fail here? I mean, if you can't even come to an agreement on this. Well, How that, that's, that's a great question. By the way, I wasn't backslapping because uh, there's still a long way to go. Yeah. It's impossible to get things done in Washington these days. And so, you know, it's, it's a minor miracle week and you can pull things together, as, as you say. But you're right. Infrastructure is different. We're not talking about the health care or taxes. We're talking about something where there's broad uh, support, again, not just among members of Congress, where we have now 11 Republicans and 10 Democrats part of this group, but also among the American people. And that's what matters is that people are looking for us to get something done, specifically on infrastructure, but more generally to work together to solve big problems. It's actually sure you can I do think that. this is a step in the right direction in both of those categories. So before you go, President Former President Trump was in your home state, was in Ohio last night. You weren't there. I understand you had a, you had a family commitment. Uh, but would, would you be on stage with him again at, at a rally? I mean, is he, is, he, is he still the leader of the effective leader of the Republican Party? Uh, he's definitely the leader of, of the party in the sense that he has high popularity among the Republican base. And that's what you saw last night, I think. You saw a big, a big turnout. Uh, but, you know, my view is pretty simple, is that the Republican Party and President Trump ought to focus on two things. One is policies. You know, during the Trump administration, a lot of good things were done for the country. Going into the pandemic, we had not just historically low unemployment, 
But we had historically low unemployment for blacks and Hispanics. We had the lowest poverty rate in the history of the country. We had the 19th straight month of wage increases of 3% or more annualized. So there was a lot of good stuff going on. We had to talk about that. The tax cuts, the tax reform, the regulatory relief was working. Our military was being rebuilt, and that was crucial and is crucial now as we face okay. so many challenges around the globe. And, and the Operation Warp Speed worked remarkably well. So let's focus on the policies that worked and also on what's not working now because the largest tax increase in American right. history is the wrong thing to do as you're coming out of this pandemic. So there's, uh, uh, there's a lot to talk about. And second, let's focus on 2022 and getting the House majority back and course. the Senate majority. So. Uh, That's course, what I would focus on and not the other stuff. Of course, he was spending a lot of his time on that other stuff, uh, the false claims that the election was stolen. Senator uh, Portman, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, the roundtable is up next. Thank you.